Well, good morning. This is Jamie Silver with Herf Jones. I'd like to welcome you back. I hope you had a wonderful holiday break and the 2017 year is off to a great start. To kick things off, I'm going to keep my part a little short here and share a resource with you on photo composition and just some tips and tricks for your camera settings. Recently, I went to visit Scott Rogers at Stuart Rogers Photography, and I recorded his presentation for you guys, and it, it's all about the topic of photography. And to start, at the end of his presentation, he's going to mention a cheat sheet, and I'm going to share this with you via a link in the podcast notes, but he gave you some great suggestions on settings for your camera at various events at school. So again, I'll share that with you from Scott. Uh, again, this is Scott at Stuart Rogers, and I'd like to share this with you now, and please enjoy. I'm Scott Rogers from Stuart Rogers Photography, and I want to talk today about covering events at schools or any event you wanted to cover. It's the basic, same basic rules going through, no matter what the event. Um, it all co it, to me, it all goes back to a picture story in Life Magazine, which uh, is hard to find anymore, but Life Magazine would do, tell a story of an entire event in one or two pages, uh, done by amazing photojournalists, and that's really what we're trying to do here with your yearbook. They, uh, in an event, in a picture story, you, st you have to tell the story. You start with the beginning, the middle, and the end, and show that in your pictures. In the case of a magazine, at the beginning is top left, end is bottom right. Uh, you use transitions. You want to show scene setters of where you are. Transitions are when you're moving from one place to another. So a scene setter might be the whole football field empty. Transition might be all the crowd walking in the door. Um, the action. And then ending might be the football field, the football sitting on the field at the end of the em with the empty stadium. Um, all of that is part of your story, and then we use compositional rules to make it happen. But what is at a game, for instance? Say you're at a football game. There is, of course, the, the game itself with the football players running around the field. It's a very important part of it, obviously. It's the entertainment, but there's much more to it. There are the fans people having fun, there's an entire story going on. So if you photograph only the game, you're missing probably, in my mind, 80% of the action of that day. From the ki other kids, little brothers and sisters, parents, teachers, coaches, friends, even the opposition team, kids selling hot dogs, there's a million things happening at that game, and honestly, every one of those little things has a story. You could actually take, a, take an entire yearbook page devoted to the kids selling the hot dogs and tell the story of setting up the hot dog stand, selling the hot dogs, and closing it down. Um, so let's go to photo composition and how that, there are three basic rules, basically four, four rules, I'll say, of photo composition. And they're in every picture you see, really in every movie scene you see, it's all the same stuff. Magazine stories, Renaissance painting, modern art, it's all the same stuff. Rule of thirds is that you take the picture frame and make a tic-tac-toe board on it, and the subject is never in the middle. It's always in one of the intersections of your tic-tac-toe board. So when grandma takes a picture, she holds up her old camera, and you're at the game, and she puts you right smack in the middle. But when a journalist takes that same picture, you are never in the middle. Your face is in one of the intersections of that line, and all of the story of that event is behind it. Leading lines are that if there are any visual elements that are lines, whether it's a banister or a road or something, those lines lead to the subject. And in this little diagram, they're leading from the corner into the rule of third intersection where the face or subject would be. There's creating depth in your pictures, and Renaissance painters did that. If you look at paintings before the Renaissance, they're all two-dimensional pictures, very flat. What the Renaissance painters figured out is that you can use your composition and lighting to make depth. So in all of their paintings, there's a foreground, a subject, a background, and an infinity. And they're all elements, and they're all carefully placed, usually in the rule of third spots. In this picture, the foreground is the stuff in the bottom left. The subject is the ladies in the playing the piano, it looks like. Background is the wall. Infinity is the very carefully placed picture on the wall that is of a scene off to infinity. Um, and again, if you look, none of those people are in the middle or, or elements. They're all in the rule of thirds. Then there's triangles. Every picture is also a triangle. Compositionally, usually the whole picture, the whole subject is a triangle, and also each person within it are triangles. Finally, short lighting is that you're always shooting into the shadow side. So instead of having the sun in the face of your subject and behind you as a photographer, the sun is always behind your subject and in your face, so you can't see what you're doing. But it makes a better picture. Um, the, having the light behind a subject 
means that that shadow, you're shooting into the shadow side and that sun is rimming around the person and creating all this detail in the subject's face. The person on the left is the uh, famous girl with the pearl earring and she is traditional short lighting. So there's a shadow, the lighting is being used to create that face just the way makeup does. If you look on the right, the Mad Men is, they use traditional elements in every scene, every, every picture, it's a, they're way into these rules. Uh, if you look at this one, the napkins on the table are the foreground, the people are the subject, the walls behind the background, and the open window to infinity. Each person has short light on their face, creating that beautiful cheekbone on her and creating the kind of mean, hard guy look on him. Um, and it works. And believe me, that was not coincidence. That, that light on her is completely manufactured. They made that happen with a bunch of reflectors and people just off frame. Rolling Stone is known for uh, really their covers and amazing compositional and photography. They're all using Renaissance painting composition. If you see this one, they're all short lit. They're all, they're not in the center. They're all in the basic compositional rules. So let's go to the pros. How do they use this when you're making a living as a, as a commercial photographer? If you see the, again, Rolling Stone cover with Julia Roberts, she's got the deck as leading lines into her from two directions. She is a complete triangle. Her face is short lit. They're shooting into the shadow side, creating that cheekbone that is, I'm sure, completely artificially made in this case. Behind her is the wall for infinity, and that stairs in the back right is not by mistake. That's, that is leading off to nowhere. Uh, again, on, say, the bottom right picture, the Mad Men picture, again, he's got a, looks like a crumpled up bedspread in front of him as a foreground. He is a subject. The woman is the background and open windows become infinity. Um, going through, say, the, the even pictures without people, that Corbus picture in the middle on the top, we've got the steeple in the front, which is the foreground, the bell tower background, ocean, no, I'm sorry, bell tower is actually the subject in this one. The ocean is the background and that little island is infinity. Um, the bottom left one is a painting. So here's a, here's a graphic arts. I wouldn't even call this a painting. It's a graphic arts piece. Um, and it, you see its rule of thirds. The ocean is, is the foreground. The people are in the top left corner of the rule of thirds in the little boat. The island is background and there's a little mountain carefully put way back there to create infinity. You know, again, Nancy Reagan, same thing. That picture of her, she's not in the middle. It's got all the, all the elements. As we go down, even say there's modern art paintings on the right, they are completely manufactured from somebody's head, I would imagine. They're not, they're not, they're just creating these images and they're using the exact same rules, same lighting, same triangles, leading lines, all of it is right there. And the foreground subject, so that even though this is modern art, these are using Renaissance painting rules. So how does that apply to yearbook pictures? If you look at the couple on the top left, she's got, they are obviously not in the center of the picture. The light is behind them, creating that amazing light on her and that cheekbone and just rimming her face and her dress, everything about it is amazing. And actually just by coincidence or, or good luck, the guy is in this very dark sort of shadowy spot. So if you're trying to send a message that here's like the angel with the light on her face and the guy is a little bit of a dark figure in this picture, it all fits and it's, it's pretty cool. On the right top, you could take a picture of everybody dancing and just hold up your camera and take this you know, great picture of everybody partying. But how much better to have all the compositional rules happening where the table in the foreground with the DJ's stuff on it is your foreground. The people then become the subject framed by all that background is the tent behind them and infinity is the doors behind that and it just it makes it all very interesting and much more it tells much more of a story than just a bunch of people dancing if you look at bottom right again he's he's not in the center he's in the rule of thirds line so at a football game the top right picture is um, just your normal football team game right so that's your, your 20 percent of the game in my head um, but if you go through and see what the other pictures of not, maybe not the guys running around the field, 
it, you get some really interesting things. And be, they're interesting, say the bottom right is interesting because that subject is not right in the middle of the picture. And going through to more, see the, even the bottom right guy here. So it's, they're, they're fun pictures because they show emotion and they're well crafted. And the camera, the person with the camera is thinking about where they're putting their camera and what they're including. If you look at, the, say, the um, bottom left picture, it, it has everything going. It's got the, the girl on the left is feeling something, showing emotion as she's cheering her friend on. The girl in the pool is obviously feeling something else as she's trying to win that race. And then even, there's even the coach on the, on the back left there who's, who's cheering her on. It's, it's got emotion and it's got all the compositional elements. And then leading lines happening, triangles, it's all there. Even the girl on the left, the way she's sitting is triangular. Um, every, picture, every picture on this page also is showing people feeling things, which is the key to the whole thing and making it even more fun. Um, so if you can get your composition down, and then get people actually happy or sad or angry or feeling something, then it, it just makes the whole thing come together. The other thing we're doing in all these is mixing it up. So you have big wide pictures of scenes, and then you have close-up pictures of scenes, and then you have really close pictures. So then you're, you're creating a page, and it's not all the same camera, the same lens. It's, it's moving around a lot between compositional elements and rules. And this, these, this slide, this, so this is a, looks like a gallery show or a, a recital. You're setting the scene on the top left, lane tech there with the little that's showing you where you are. There's a wider angle picture of the, of the quartet playing. And then close-ups of people enjoying the artwork, close-ups of the artists, more wide angle pictures of things happening. You're, you're telling the entire story with lighting composition and also, again, people feeling things. The, obviously, there's emotion in a lot of these pictures, too, and it all comes together. Um, making that happen, I think the, there are very complicated rules associated with ISO and f-stop and film speed and how they all tie together. And if you know all those things, it's amazing and great. White balance also. Um, if you don't, don't worry because there are also great little icons on the camera that if you don't know the technical behind it, you, you're, if, and you're at a football game, there's a little picture of a guy running around and you can just set the camera to that. Then as you learn more complex rules, if you get into that, then you can take much more control and show more, but honestly, the computer-generated pictures are not bad. They're making pretty good choices. So if you're at a football game and you pick the running guy, you're gonna get pretty good pictures. If you're at the lake and you pick the little icon of the lake scene, it's probably gonna be a pretty good picture. Now, if you go and do that all manually and you know how to do it, yes, you can make it a little bit better, but you're missing, I guess I don't, you don't wanna get lost in the technical details and miss the picture in front of you. So if you're sitting there fumbling with the settings on your camera, while the most amazing piece of emotion is happening in front of you, you miss the picture. And to me, it's much more important to show what's happening and what people are feeling than have the exact right setting, honestly, because you can fix that stuff later too if you need to. In the studio setting like this room, we use the same rules where we have very basic, we have lights that can be used in a very complicated way by somebody who knows how to do them and they can do amazing pictures like a Hollywood starlet picture from the 30s. We also have light, lighting that you can use if, if you don't know how to do that, you get pretty basic lighting because it's much more important to know the person in front of you and get them to relax and get them to feel something and capture that on your camera than to have them feeling something while you're trying to mess with your camera and you miss the whole picture. And the same thing applies on a game. If you're, if you're staring down at that little setting, bot, setting numbers while the winning pass is caught and everybody is screaming and cheering, you just missed it. <laughs> you, might, you might end up with a great picture after it's all done, but it won't show the emotion. Thanks for including me in this, Jamie. And um, next time, I will we'll probably put a link here to some technical details that, that talk about how to, the, the more advanced settings for, say, shooting a theater and a play, volleyball, indoor flash, pools. Probably the most difficult game to shoot is a volleyball game. Um, Beyond that, I think we'll, we'll have sometime in the future another presentation that talks about the details of the camera settings and how to use them to your advantage. Um, but for now, I mean, I think 
uh, the key to this is really the compositional elements. You get that down, then you can build over the layers of everything else. Thanks.